having a stand makes a very diff big difference compared to not having a stand. Mm -hmm. Hey guys, recently I built my own desk and I flayed Bruh. my speaker. Bruh. Recently I built my own desk and I laid my speaker boxes flat on the desk. So now I'm wondering, do we really need a speaker stand? What are the pros and cons? Let's find out. Oh, and you may grab some snacks. This is gonna take a while. Okay, before we start, I really have to tell you, ignore my tabs. You will see there's a lot, ignore them, okay? <laughs> no, 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 okay, no. Okay, so what do I type in? Why desk speaker stand? Like the tone of the speaker once it's here on the table, is completely entirely different. So you definitely, no matter what kind of studio you have, the one thing that improves the sound of your speakers the most is actually getting them up on a stand or at least on some foam pad and decoupling from the table. Because if the table is involved, it's like a musical instrument, it's like the body of a guitar, it will amplify certain frequencies and completely entirely ruin the sound of your speaker. So let's actually try that out and test it really quick because as everyone actually knows, it's good to decouple your speakers, put them on stands, on foam, but some people think the effect might not as big and it's not worth it or they don't have the space. And I was surprised how big the effect actually is. Let me put one of those down, turn on the computer and just play some music left and right. <laughs> So this sounds definitely better. Decoupling, okay. Oh, well, this might not be the most scientific test in the world, but this room was treated and the microphone was in the same position, just one speaker than the other speaker. It's anyways mono, so it shouldn't affect that much. The biggest factor by far is it just being on the desk. You can definitely hear it resonating. You can kind of hear sound coming out of the desk. It's vibrating. It's horrible, it's ruining the entire low end. It's just overemphasizing it and definitely makes the sound of the speaker by 20 to 30% worse. 20 to 30%? I definitely have to do a before and after. Using speaker stands is an easy way to improve isolation and prevent sound from resonating through your desk. Of course. Isolation and resonance off or on the desk. Okay. Of course, there will be a little resonation happening with the stand, but it's a huge improvement over what you'll experience on your desk. Otto, the first question is uh, pretty straightforward. What's the, uh, the real reason for getting stands? Uh, to getting stands in the first place? Um, well, the main reason actually is uh, placing the loudspeaker inside the room. So if you consider, what's the alternative? What if you don't have a stand? Where are you going to put the loudspeaker? Uh, on the floor, on a shelf, uh, next to the wall. All of that is going to have some acoustic effects in the room. So you have some boundary effects. The frequency response changes relative to where you actually put the loudspeaker. So if you don't have a stand, you can't really place the loudspeaker optimally. So you get the, the stand basically to make sure that you get it up off of the floor? Yes. Get it away from a shelf? So basically location. Height of the ear and you get the freedom to position it any way you want, but I want to put it on the desk, so. But also, you know, to get the right ear level, I, I assume? Yes, that's part of it. Mm -hmm. um, so to, to get the optimal sound, the speaker should be placed in a, in a certain height, mm -hmm. uh, basically ear level. Um, you have a dif distance between the speakers and the listening position that, that matters to the sound. And again, especially the distance between the speaker and the walls 
that makes a big difference to mm. the sound. So that, that's actually the, the first step. Just having a stand makes a very diff big difference compared to not having a stand. You were talking about uh, close to the wall. What if, let's say that I buy a pair of uh, CO10s, I want to put them on the wall, we have a bracket for that? Yes. Well, on a CO10 you have an uh, equalizer actually, so you have a setting on the back okay. of the speaker where you can uh, uh, turn on the wall setting, so then the speaker is equalized, so it sounds better close to the wall. Uh, that's better than not doing anything, we're trying to... to uh, so wall distance is a thing? Two to three feet? Hang on. Almost a meter? <laughs> no. Okay, so the bouncing thingy. We just ignore that. Speakers work like microphones. If you've ever done any degree of recording, you know that if you move the microphone just a couple of inches, it can massively change the sound. So minor change. Ha, 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 Look at this dude. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> ...in placement can actually produce massive results. Like the picture on the left, where the speakers are essentially firing along the short wall or long throw, which is the picture on the right. So the speakers are firing along the longer side of the speaker is that low end actually takes space to develop. So the low end frequencies are actually very long. If you give ideas, you might on the right maximize the symmetry in your room. So this goes for the speaker placement itself, but it also goes for anything else that you have in your Okay, this will never be optimal for my speaker or for my room, but I think I still need speaker stands. I won't get like 30%, but maybe 10, 15. So basically speaker stands are giving us the freedom to position the speakers where they need to be. However, for me, <laughs> I put them on the desk. You should keep in mind that you have a lot of distance to the wall. And if you have walls, Put it symmetrically to the walls which i can't apply either so my sound won't be that much better still the main benefits of the speaker stand is uh, isolation and reducing resonance with the desk so this is still helpful so we will do that so, next thing, Amazon the speaker, speaker stand. So, and as you can see, they're not that beautiful. What is that? Foam? So foam probably solves the resonance thingy, but not the height. Okay. Okay, I don't think I like any of those, so I have to build my own. I mean, this is the whole point of the video, so let's do this. So I want actually something simple, maybe futuristic, modern and unique, which you don't see anywhere. So maybe something futuristic, cylindrical. Let's see, okay. Okay, I guess, <clears throat> okay, I guess I saw enough and I think I have an idea. Let's put it, let's put it into 3D to check it out. Okay, so how do we do it? It's blender time. <laughs> Okay, so this is the one you just saw, and now I made some modifications. So this one is a little bit less wrinkled. This one, this one is a little bit different. 
more belly-like. This one is, well, I don't really like it. So here I tried to be more modern or something, but for me it didn't work out. So in the end, I chose this one. Doesn't look like much for now. So why did I decide for this? Let's see. So here I tried to simulate how it could look like. Sorry, bro. So, and I actually like the rendering. So let's focus on that shape. And now we need to 3D print it. Let's make it real. Look at that. I think the shape looks really awesome, but the surface is a little bit rough. So I think we have to make that more smooth and then we can actually continue. Okay, the next steps are simple. Polish the surface, then create a silicon mold and then pour actual concrete in the mold and figure out if this shape is actually working. So we finished this thing and now we need a negative from this shape. So how do we do it? One second. So it's simple. We just play with Legos. So the first thing we need a pod. I just put it. I just put it here. So then we need a plate, which is approximately the same size as this, a little bit bigger, and it actually fits in the pot, which it does. So all we have to do is build an encasing and, and I show you that. So now we have the shape, it's quite high. And now we need to pour it and fill it with silicone. So this is the outer shape. This is our positive, which goes right in there. And we need something like a guide. And this is what I built here. So 
looks a little bit complex, but you'll see how to do it. I just show you. So this will be a close one, but I'm optimistic. Should work. That's the disadvantage of a belly shape. So you probably never saw something like this on YouTube, but this is my version of a silicon mold. So all we have to do is put it in the pot and use a vacuum pump. So this is the next step. But before that we have to pour the silicon. So let's go ahead and calculate the right volume and I'll be back shortly. Oh hey, did you notice I got a new couch? Okay, so I have to bring out the trash and then we can focus on that thing right here. I think no one has ever seen something like this, but yeah, we will look into this. So look at that. Okay, I'm heading out. And we are back. So let's go. Let's check this thing out. And this is like my first unboxing on this channel. Shape is free, and now you can see. And we have a big issue. This is going to leak. So it was a little bit too close, but I have to fix that. But I guess we can start pouring concrete now. That's for sure.
So, as you can see, I'm preparing the concrete. This is the cheapest I could find, and as it turned out, for a reason. It has a lot of gravel and bigger stones in it. This was totally unsuitable for the level of detail we need here. Also, I released it way too early. So you can see here easily what the consequences are for the first try. This is my second run and I used way more expensive concrete, but it is suitable for the level of detail we need here. This time I wanted to make everything right. In my experience with silicone molds, I wanted to be extra cautious and used the vacuum pump and left it there while curing. This was a bad mistake again, as you can see here. Looks like a fluffy cheesy something. Now that we all learned that, the third run worked like a charm. That tiny hole in the mold caused leakage. I had hoped it won't be as much, but it is what it is. Hence, we unfortunately need one more additional step. We have to grind it down as much as possible while keeping the initial shape. My battery is not very strong, so I left a little bit of a seam. But still, I think it looks great overall. Wow, it actually took me two months to get to this point right now. We went from this to this to this. This is progress. So the first thing is we actually put some thingies of that on the bottom so that it doesn't scratch the surface of the table. And then we use hopefully the nano tape put it on here and hang on we use the nano tape and put it actually right almost in the middle if we are lucky it's actually holding so and after that there's only one more thing a comparison between before and after So this doesn't look pretty, but it's unique, right? Okay, and now it's all set up. So I bring that back, record the before, and then we record the after. And then let's check the results.
Okay, let's end this way too long video with a short conclusion. So did we improve the audio? I would say yes, definitely yes. We can certainly do some little things to get all better audio. But I guess this speaker stand won't be the one little thing. This is over-engineered and needs way too many steps to produce and only works well with no wires attached to the speakers. The power wire is so heavy that the right speaker actually falls over after more than a week, unfortunately. So in the next video I will try the cheapest and easiest way I can think of to get even better results and without tipping over my speaker on the desk. And if you're wondering if the mold was for waste now, maybe you can answer that question. If you made it till the end, you're awesome and probably crazy at the same time. If you like, you can support me by liking and subscribing. Have a great time until the next video. Bye.